This is the CCV notes video. These are the notes that you need to be able to come and do the presentation. Uh, I'm going to go to video task. Uh, these notes will be posted here under the Constitution Study Guide, and they're part of the CCB topic exploration. Uh, and so it tells you there how to do it, um, so I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to start with the images here and see how many I can get through in 15 minutes. Uh, there's not notes for every, everything, there's just notes for specific ones, so the labels were already done. Uh, for number five, which is the executive branch, you got the governor, lieutenant governor. All I want you to put down is Mayor Renner hyphen local government. Mayor Renner is the mayor, so we have a, a governor named Rauner, we have a president named Trump, we have a mayor named Renner, and so there's different levels of government, mayor, Renner, local. The note for number six, six is about the Bill of Rights. I just want you to make a heart with an AF in it and to know that the AF stands for the Anti-Federalists. They were the ones that were afraid of a, of a powerful government that would interfere with people's freedom and liberty, so they wanted a Bill of Rights to protect the people. They liked the Bill of Rights, the Anti-Federalists. Uh, you can obviously pause this to, to write down things as you need to. The note for number seven, this is the impeachment power. And so the impeachment power is an example of the legislative branch over the executive and the judicial. They are the ones that can be impeached. So impeachment is legislative over executive judicial. That's an example of a check. Uh, your, your task is to be able to not only write these down, but be able to kind of discuss them with me, understand them to some degree when you come to meet with me. Number eight, the legislative branch. I just want you to put down that it has two halves at the state and federal level. There's a House and a Senate. So the legislative branch has a House plus a Senate. And number 10, the idea that each state would have exactly two U.S. senators favored the smaller states, made them happy. Uh, the big states wanted more power. That happens in the House of Representatives, where the more people you have, the more power you get. And so at the Constitutional Convention, it was known as the Great Compromise, that the Senate would favor the small states, the House would favor the large population states, uh, and that was a, a compromise. Both sides got something they wanted and it helped to get the Constitution ratified. Those are the notes for study guide one. So I'm going to go back here, and I'm going to click on two. The notes for two, again, they're listed here. I'll run through them, what they mean. Uh, number four talks about a 10-year term for Illinois Supreme Court judges. And all you need to put down there is it protects judges from voters. It, that long term means that they can kind of do things, have a long track record before the voters judge them, instead of judging them over one small thing. And I'll, I'll talk later about why we might want to protect judges. Uh, number five talks about the Illinois Secretary of State, driver's licenses, license plates. I want you to know that the U.S. or federal Secretary of State, he's in charge of foreign policy, or she, uh, as the case might be. So. The U.S. Secretary of State is Foreign Policy. The Illinois Secretary of State is Driver's Licenses, License Plates, Official State Documents. Fourteen, I just want you to know that Illinois has no death penalty. Illinois has done away with its death penalty. Fifteen, talked about prejudice, discrimina or actually discrimination. I just want you to know that, that prejudice uh, might be offensive, it might be ignorant, but prejudice itself is not illegal. What is illegal is discrimination, when you treat people differently uh, based on some kind of a, of a status they have, whether it be age or religion, uh, ge uh, gender. So prejudice versus discrimination, the belief is not illegal, but acting on it is. And 17 is about the Bill of Rights, the Illinois Bill of Rights, or state rule Bill of Rights, in some ways protects us from each other. And that's different than the U.S. or the federal Bill of Rights, which in many ways protects us from the government, things the government can't do, like tell us to shut up or where to go to church or take away our right to bear arms or uh, search our homes um, without cause. Those are the notes for number two. Uh, I'll go on, get to number three. Image three looks like this. There's only four notes here. Uh, the first one goes with number five, the three branches, legislative, executive, judicial. The big thing to put down there is they wanted to divide the power. Don't give one branch all the power, and so that way the people won't be dominated by, by one branch taking over. And so they build in checks where one branch can stop another. I've already told you about one 
um, was the impeachment power, was legislative checking executive or checking judicial. So they built in these checks and balances, uh, things where different branches have to work together to make something happen. For example, a bill becoming a law has to go through the House and the Senate and the legislative branch, and then it also has to be signed by the president or governor in the executive branch, unless there's a, a veto and an override. So that's dividing up power. Six, county board is just the idea that when you get down to local government, it's, it's closer to the people. Uh, you're more likely to run into the mayor around town than you are to run into the governor or the president. Those people uh, might be here at some time in their lives, but the mayor lives here. And so local government tends to be closer to the people. And there's a lot of you know belief then that that would mean they're more responsive to what's going on locally. They better understand the situation and they should be making most of the rules for how people live. Uh, number nine uh, is talking about referendums where the voters vote directly on an issue. What you should write down there is it has to do with people power. Uh, it's, it's where the people get to decide. In the case of Illinois, it's usually things like a, a bond referendum to build a school. Uh, in some states like California, though, the people can actually make laws. So you got people power slash, you know, whose government is it? You, you could put down, really, if you want, I didn't put it here, but the, the U.S. Constitution opens with the phrase in the preamble, we the people of the United States. And the idea, this is the people's government. The people created the government. They, they, they serve us. We don't serve them. Number 10, uh, protected from the people, the voters. This is the lifetime terms for federal judges. Uh, and the idea is federal judges uh, are, are protected from the people, the voters. Uh, and, and so if they make an unpopular decision, <clears throat> but that it's the right thing to do, the people can't fire them. They're not, they're not influenced by political pressure. Uh, just a, a quick example I used in class, uh, something like the Brown versus Board of Education decision was, was made at a time when the United States as a whole was not ready to desegregate. If they were, they would have elected presidents and a Congress and state uh, assemblies that wanted to desegregate the country. The, the, the people weren't electing that. But the Supreme Court looked at the Constitution and the 14th Amendment and said, hey, segregation is not, is not allowed. You can't do separate but equal. Well, many people may have been upset with the Supreme Court for doing that, but the court is protected from the people. In a sense, it did what the Constitution required instead of what the people wanted. And so that's one of the reasons why you give federal judges uh, a, a life term. They, of course, can resign, and in extreme cases, they can be impeached. But impeachment is a power that does not belong to the people. It belongs to the legislative branch, which is influenced by the people. Those are the notes for number five, and are for uh, study guide three. I'll go on to number four. Number four, we got notes. Two through seven, the answer really was these are the executive officers, governor, lieutenant governor, attorney general, secretary of state, the treasurer, and the controller. I just want you to know that Illinois has got um, executive officials. The president, of course, has a vice president, but then he also has what's called his cabinet. Uh, and so he's got a cabinet officers, uh, secretary of the state, secretary of the treasury, secretary um, of veteran affairs, Secretary of Education, there's an Attorney General. Uh, so he's got cabinet officers to be in the President's cabinet. Executive branch appoints you, the President would appoint you, and then the Senate has to confirm you. So again, it's this balancing or, or spreading power out is the process. And you serve then at the, at the pleasure of the President. If the President decides he's not happy with your performance, he wants to go in a different direction, the President can, can tell you that he, he's done with you, that, that you need to resign. Um, and so that's the president has his cabinet or his top advisors. Uh, just to clarify a difference between that and a, a federal court judge, uh, the president also appoints federal court judges. They are also approved by the Senate, but once you become a federal court judge, the president, the executive branch, has no power over you. Uh, you, you are independent of that president who appointed you. Uh, number nine, the U.S. Constitution is the supreme law of the land just to emphasize the idea that the federal government uh, is higher in most cases than the state. So if there's a conflict between the U.S. Constitution and the Illinois Constitution, the U.S. Constitution will win. It's the supreme law of the land. 
Uh, number 10, limit people power. The, the idea that presidents Bush, Bush, no Bush can only serve two terms. I, I just wanted to make the point that if we had a really good president that people really like, uh, this, this limits the people power. Uh, they, they cannot select that president for a third term because the Constitution was amended to, uh, to make it so. And so, uh, you know, sometimes they, they limit what the people can do, even if they want to. 13, G and B stands for good and bad. And so in Illinois, we elect judges. Why is it good that we elect judges? Well, it's good because it gives the people power. The people get to decide who the judges are. And so, you know, anytime you put power in the hands of the people in a, in a republic or a democracy, that's a positive. But the downside of it is twofold. Number one is many voters are, are, are ignorant. They look at names on a ballot. They don't really know who these people are. And they vote for people because of their name looks honest or they like their picture or something. And that's not necessarily a good way to cast a vote. And the other one is it, it doesn't protect judges. If a judge has to make a difficult decision that's the right decision to make, uh, if he has to face the voters, he might think twice about doing it. An example I gave in class had to do with, let's say there was a, a murder trial in the community, and, and people knew that the, the, the person did it that's on trial. There was pretty good evidence, but some of the evidence was, was tainted. It was illegally acquired, and, and the judge then has to, as a judge, say this evidence can't be used, even if it means there won't be a conviction. And so, you know, a person might, in a sense, be freed, uh, not convicted of murder, because the judge eliminated clear uh, evidence that, that showed they did it, but that was illegally obtained. The people might vote that judge out, even though he did his job. And, and so that's a downside of the people uh, picking their judges. Fourteen, again, a good and bad. We got power is shared. Um, and so there's the sharing of power, but then there's also uh, the, the checks that branches have. Why is that good? Well, it's cooperation. The sharing that power spreads it out. It keeps it from getting concentrated in one particular branch. But the downside is it can be very slow. It takes a while for things to get worked out in terms of, uh, of solving any sort of a, of a crisis that requires a quick response. Uh, but it, it provides some consistency over time. Things don't just change very rapidly, which would create instability for, for people as individuals, for businesses. Uh, for, for the nation as a whole in terms of uh, foreign policy. Uh, and so it's, it's good and it's bad to have that system worked out that way. Uh, for time reasons, I'm going to stop this video after the fourth image. And so there's going to be a part two. It will be a, a shorter video, but that's the one that will be linked also on here, and it will cover the fifth image. So you're going to have to start it back up to get the, uh, the fifth image.